Hey guys, Mac here again. It's an absolute age since I've posted anything. The day job's been getting in the way of the fun stuff, unfortunately. I have been getting quite a few questions about how to run Windows 11 on one of the ARM M1 Macs. There's a lot of videos out there showing it happening, but there seems to be few showing how to do it or in fact how well it works. So if we have a look at my Windows 11 machine here, for example, you'll see that we've got Office installed, we've got PowerPoint, Visio, project all that good stuff and i have to say it works really well and as a, a client machine it runs just as well as it did on any of my intel units quite surprisingly so in fact so let's go and have a look at how to do this in parallels now there are some licensing considerations around this but i'm not going to cover them in this video what i am going to do is just take you through how to get a windows 11 machine set up in parallels and also i'll show you how to install office as well there's a, a couple of cool ways how we can do that so the first thing you're going to have to do to get this installed is download Windows 11 on ARM. Now I'll put the link for this in the description of the video, but bear in mind you also need to be a member of this Insider Preview program. If you're not, you can sign up for it on the website here if you want. It's up in the top right. I'm already a member, so we can continue. Now what I'm going to do is go through here and we're going to just download the Insider Preview build. So we're going to click on that and we can see it downloading up here at the top of the screen. It's about nine and a half gigabytes, so it will take a couple of minutes to download. So we'll just let that run for a moment. And there we go, that's done. That didn't take too long at all on my stupid internet connection here. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to build our machine in Parallels. It's actually far easier than you'd imagine. So I'm gonna go into my Parallels program here. You can see I've got a couple of VMs set up already, but we're gonna set up a new one. So I'm gonna to go to the File menu and select New. Now you'll be warned that you're using a unit with an M1 chip, so obviously we have to use the appropriate build. We can't use Intel builds, for example. So I'm just gonna click continue here, and we're gonna select install Windows or another OS DVD or image file there. Click continue, and we'll have to go and find the file that we've just downloaded. But as you can see, it's found it automatically for me. So that's the one we want, and we're gonna just click continue. Told you this was easy. Now. We have to choose the configuration of the machine. If you're not sure what all of this stuff does, your best bet is just leave it on productivity. Essentially what it does, it, it, it tweaks some of the configuration of the virtual machine, but you can change these things later. So if you're not too sure or you're fairly new to this, just leave it at productivity and you can go with that. And then as you get to know it a little bit better, you can go in and adjust things afterwards. So I'm gonna click continue here. I'm gonna give it a, a machine. We're just gonna call it a Win 11 ARM build. Okay, now one thing I am going to do is just click the customize settings before installation, just so we can have a look and see how this virtual machine is actually being configured. So let's cl click create there. Now before we go and actually get the machine built, what it's done is because we've clicked that customize button, it's often offered up the option to actually customize the environment for this virtual machine. So you can have a look at various things in here. Some of the things I tend to like clicking or having configured is the reclaim disk space on shutdown. That saves having to do it manually. What's particularly interesting is if you go into the hardware section, you can see how everything from, you know, how many cores are allocated to the unit, how much memory is allocated to the unit, to this virtual machine are all configured in here. So if you want to go in and modify them, you absolutely can. So for example, if I wanted to change the hardware configuration in terms of CPU and memory, this is where I would do it. I can click on manual. I could change the processors to four cores, for example, and I could change the memory. As I say, if you're fairly new to this, you might just want to leave this on automatic. I'm going to leave it on four. For, and 16 for now but you can also go into things like the hard disk if you want to change that default size all that sort of stuff the other option i'm going to change on mine as well is just which network i'm connected to i want to connect to my main network which is that one but again you can probably leave yours on default let's assume that we've finished all of our configuration now we're going to go and build the machine let's get this closed down and just click continue and there we go, our machine is built. I told you it was easy, didn't I? Now that's just switched into a larger view. So we're running in a window here. Let's get these items closed down. Now what we have here is Windows 11 on ARM running in a virtual machine on our M1 Mac. Now I told you it's a really easy configuration process and it absolutely is. And this works really, really well. You can see that we, we don't have much installed in this because it is a fresh build. So let's perhaps move on and I'll show you how to get Office installed. 
Now to get Office installed, you obviously have to have a copy of Microsoft Office. Now there are various ways of getting it. I'm going to install it for my Office 365 tenancy here. So you can see the, I've got the option here to install Office, but you can get it from pretty much wherever you need it. Now you'll see that it's downloaded the office setup.exe. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to open it and let it run. That's now going to download and install Office. I told you this stuff was simple. So let's let this run and we'll have a look at the performance of it once it's finished. And there we go, that's all done. Now, ironically, that took a lot longer than actually getting Windows 11 itself installed, but uh, that's all done, it's installed, we now have Office installed. So let's have a look at the performance of it and we'll just see what it's like. So let's fire up something like Excel. There we go, we can fire up Word, that'll be in here as well. And perhaps finally, let's get PowerPoint started up. So as you can see, it's very, very quick. It's very, very usable. And I have been using it as my live environment since uh, since I switched to these units. And I have to say, I'm very impressed by it. So what kind of other things do we run into with this? Well, there are various things within Parallels itself that you may want to change for your machine. So for example, there's things like what folders are shared, all kinds of stuff like that. So how would we do that? Well, when the machine's running, if you click on the cog up here in the top right hand corner, that will bring up the configuration of the machine. So let's do that. Now you'll see that you won't be able to adjust all of them while the machine's running. If, you, if certain things, if you want to change them, you'll have to shut the machine down. But the kind of things I'm interested in, if we look under options here, you'll see various things around how the machine behaves. So for example, how and when it starts up, whether we do it manually, whether the machine pauses, for example, when it's not busy. What I'm particularly interested in here is how we deal with sharing. Now by default, the integration between Mac OS and the Windows 11 machine is quite tight. So for example, if we look at the configuration button here, you will see that my desktop documents, pictures, and several other folders are shared with the one in my normal Mac OS account. Now I have to say that's really handy because it means we've got the shared desktop and uh, we can use both on the same machine. Now there are other things in here. For example, I can set up custom folders. So if I wanted to share the whole of my home folder, for example, I absolutely could. I can just select it in the finder window here and click OK. And what I will find is when I go into my Explorer in Windows 11, it should now be a mapped drive. You can also see it's also selected some of the drives on my some of my NAS units that are local as well. So there are various little tweaks that you can do in that configuration menu. Now you're not going to damage anything on a new machine, so have a, a dig around and see what all the options are in there and you can adjust it. <laughs> And, and get a unit that works in the way that you want. Like I say, the performance of this, I'm genuinely surprised about how well this runs. Even Intel applications within the ARM environment on um, on Windows within Parallels, it's virtualized as well. So hopefully your experience is as positive as mine, but that takes you through how easy it is to get that Windows 11 machine configured within your environment and a copy of Office in there as well. Now you can also use things like the Office deployment tool to download and, and install Office on this. The process is exactly the same as previous videos I've done on that, so I'll link to that in the description below. But if you get, get any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, in fact, one, one thing that's just popped up, somebody asked me which unit, which Mac this is running on, so let's have a look and see the specification of this one. This is one of the top spec units. It's one of the 16 inch 2021 units. So it's got the M1 Max in there with 64 gig of RAM and storage. I think it's a two terabyte unit. Yes, it is. So, so this is the one with the 32 GPU cores as well. So it is a very powerful machine. But the one thing I will say is I also run this virtual machine or a virtual machine very similar to this on one of the MacBook Airs and it works surprisingly well. So it isn't down just to the performance of the laptop that we're running this demo on. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you found it useful. I did explain at the beginning it was going to be very, very simple to achieve. And this video purely was for somebody who asked me how to do it. So I thought I'd, I'd share it on my channel. 